Hi everybody, welcome back to Borderlands 3. My name is Mikey Dubs and welcome back to day six of farming the God Roll Monarch from Kilovolt. We're gonna be doing a community day where we read comments. I'm gonna say about every two videos or so, we're gonna be doing reading comments and we have some interesting developments in the farms. We're 335 runs in, but the odds will be changing. Oh, we got a, a, a nice radiation monarch. Let's go ahead and take a look at these parts. Let's see how this baby can fare. I don't think I have a Radiation Monarch on this flak yet. Let's see. Okay, only two bodies, which is sad. Three barrels. The grip is not very good. It does give us magazine size, but the grip's not very good. And the foregrip is wrong, so it's not going to be the... It's not going to be a very good Monarch, but at least it's a Radiation one, so... It enters our inventory. But we do have an update as far as... Our odds so let's jump right into that nagavang3809 says thanks for answering my question it means a lot to me and i would love and i love binging this series it's going to suck when it ends also how do you calculate the odds for the god roll versions of items i know it has something to do with loot lemon but i'm still confused on how to do it keep up the great content well nagavang let me show you exactly how i do it okay so here we have the loot lemon page for the monarch and if we scroll down to the parts tab we can see every type of part that the Monarch can roll with. The community has taken this information and compiled it. So right off the rip, the one part that we have to have is the 2x projectiles. That gives us the times 8 and times 8 god roll. So the odds of getting that is 18.5%. Then take those odds and we multiply it by the odds of the other parts that we want. So for instance, the foregrip. We want this damage one, which rolls at 35.1% chance. So we take 18.5% times 35.1%. We go, then we go to the rail. We only want this reload speed rail. So times 25% element. We're not being picky because we don't have one yet. And for the barrels and the body, it's a little bit different. If you look in this top right corner, you will see that the Monarch can drop with either two or three body accessories. So it always will drop with two. And it can sometimes drop with three. And the chance is this 83.3%. So we take 83.3% into our multiplication. This other 83.3% into our multiplication. And it comes out to about 0.184%. As you can see, I took all my numerators, multiplied them together to get to this number. I took all my denominators, multiplied them out to get to this number, divide them by each other. And you end up actually getting the number you'll get in your calculator is 0 0.0. 0184 but to make it a percent you simply just move the decimal place over and attach the percent sign so we have about a 0.184 percent chance on any given run to get the god roll monarch to double check our work what we're going to do is we're going to go to chat gpt and i asked it can you tell me the odds of winning a parlay if i give you the percent chance of winning each leg and it said yeah i can give you the odds of winning a parlay sure but then I said, but it's not a parlay. It's parts for a Borderlands gun to be perfect, but the concept is the same. And they said, memory updated, got it. Okay. But I said, these are all out of 100. Here are the six legs or parts. So here's all my percentages. And this includes the percent chance of kilovolt dropping it. So it's not only kilovolt drop chance, but it's also the all the part drop chances com com that create one big parlay. And they spit out the number to me of... 0.184%, which is the same number I got. Thank you, ChatGPT. Now, this is where my math skills kind of go by the wayside, and I let ChatGPT figure this one out. I said, can you give me that number as a fraction with a numerator equaling 1 to get my odds of 1 in 270? And they said, sure, I'll do that. And they spit me back out 1 in 544, which does make sense, because when I originally did these numbers, I was a lot more... I was a lot less picky with what parts I wanted. I was taking fire rate and I was taking damage for the foregrip. I, I was allowing foregrip two and foregrip three to be considered god roll. And I also believe I, I was less picky with the the body accessories for the not the, for the accuracy bloom and stuff like that. So to get the actual perfect god roll, it's not even going to be one in two seventy. So you can all thank Nagavang for making this farm way more mentally taxing on us because now it's not in one in 270 it's one in 544 and listen i don't hold a monopoly on being right about math so i broke down the math to answer this comment and i'm pretty confident that one in 544 is the correct number if you guys can check my math on that but i believe every time we kill kilovolts it's a 0.18 per 
1.184% chance. And then if you multiply that by the reciprocal of ChatGPT helping me with math numbers, then you get to 1 in 544, which is tough. But thank you, Nagavang, for your comment. Isaiah Jenkins says, let's go. Northern Lion mentioned. Yeah, Northern Lion has been one of my favorite YouTubers for a while now. I first learned about Northern Lion when he did, I think it was a bro versus bro with Ludwig. And I was a Ludbug back in the day. So I started watching him and I really liked um, a couple of the games he was playing. When I first started watching him, he was playing a whole lot of Super Auto Pets. And I was getting into Super Auto Pets. And it was just kind of a natural a youtuber for me to watch so i really liked watching him and then whenever he would switch games i would take his his recommendation i played wild frost i haven't played slay the spire and i haven't played of course uh the binding of isaac which is his big one but i like watching northern line he's one of those youtubers that i will put on as i am falling asleep we got a 10 8 1 9 which i believe is top damage for a for a holy trinity element which is fire so we get the the damage and the fire rate from the body but no accuracy we get all three barrel accessories the grip is the damage grip the foregrip is the foregrip is the damage foregrip ladies and gentlemen this fire it did not drop it did not drop with accuracy on it but as far as damage numbers are, are concerned this times four monarch is an absolute god roll would you look at that in the 545th run we got ourselves i consider i'm not going to be too picky on these times fours an insanely lucky roll amazing a fire monarch to make us proud on run 338 that's pretty cool that's pretty pretty cool wild card 9486 says hi i watch all your vids and love it do you have any tips for what legends are best on gauge on bl2 so what legends I'm not too sure because I don't think legends are actually a a term used in Borderlands. However, if you if you mean skills, Anarchy is is core to her gameplay is is probably her number one. If you mean class mods, I like the one that gives you a fire rate, or I like the one that can give you more mag size at the at the cost of reload speed or reload speed at the cost of mag size. That kind of stuff is pretty good. And for big boss fights, cooldown rate is a really great thing to have because death trap can tank the boss for you which is insanely strong but as far as legends i'm not too sure what those are but maybe one day you could mean if you're meaning guns i know that jacob's shotgun i'm, I'm sure you don't mean guns but maybe maybe it got auto corrected or something what what guns jacob's shotguns go crazy on her um in general things that Things that have multiple projectiles, like the Fibber, if you want, like, I think her like, god weapon is a Fibber, but even a Sham Fleet, if you're trying to do the North Fleet Sham Shield type shenanigans, that goes really hard engaged. So yeah, that's pretty good. The Cactus King says, for these farms, bro, get a Schluter artifact and do Butt Stallion Milk from Tannis' Science Machine. More odds of getting what you want. Hey, thanks, the Cactus King. I believe those two methods of Schluter and Butt Stallion Milk increase your chances of getting World Drops. And while yes, the Monarch can World Drop from Kilovolt and be perfect, the odds of it are so low that I believe there's an opportunity cost associated to maximizing your World Drop chances. And that is more Legendaries will fall and that will slow down my runs because I will be checking more items. I think if we're going specifically for this Monarch, this style might actually be the fastest which is a weird thing to think about like you actually want less legendaries but in reality i i think that is that is the case that is exactly true get one shot homie all right let's see so a legendary drops i have to go check it it's a monarch it's not god roll and i have a god roll cryo we go past it Odd Texan says, the normal loader bot at the top of the purple tree, I think it is the ion loader. It actually makes you a ton more, actually makes you take a ton more damage. There isn't anything good that comes from it. And if you want a mobbing version of the build, Megavore with Butcher or Monarch and Headcount gives you a truly unlimited uptime on racks. As you can use a gas call. The gas call doesn't come anointed, though sadly, but comes with Reuter and or cloning. You know, it does make sense that taking Megavore and then shooting my guns would actually give me my actions go back faster, which allowed me to use more racks. Because as of right now, what he's talking about, so we were in, in the last video, or in two, two videos ago, we are talking about my build. 
and I don't take Megavore for this one shot, but he says for mobbing, it's a good idea to have it. That way you can run over the butcher or something and get back your get back your racks a lot faster. I have thought about it, and for me personally, I don't know if it's really that necessary uh, for mobbing sections. I could be wrong, but I think this is you don't need that much cooldown. And I think you might just be better off with the Garden Angel all the time. And that is, I think a lot of that has to do with. I think the, the Peregrine, yeah, you can get this skill in the green tree with the Peregrine class mod, which is kill skill. Whenever flat kills an enemy, an uh, action skill cooldown is reduced. And if my pet does it, it's even more, which r rarely happens. But minus 1.75 seconds on a skill whose cooldown is what? 18 seconds, and I have extra charges and bonus cooldown rate. Like, it, you, it rarely ever is down. However, yes, I completely get um, your point that if I did take Megavore, if I, I took some points out of other things and put them into Megavore, that I could be getting a lot more action, a lot more action skills off per minute, probably in, in the long run. Actually, that probably uh, very realistically. So thank you for that. Then he says, also as a plus comment, I want more raid bosses like Vermi and BL2. I love that he was rare and not everyone knew about it. It made defeating Vermi special then if you could also get the Norfleet, which was so much cooler. I just want more secret raid bosses in Borderlands 4. You know, that's a really great point. I think that the community has kind of rallied behind Vermi being an annoying fight, but the, the cool aspect of Vermivorous is is so, so cool. I remember spawning him, I think, once with my brother, and we couldn't beat it. We never went back because we got beat so badly. But I definitely understand that you know, having that extra challenge and having that secrecy is a really, really cool part of a raid boss i think maybe if vermivorous was less challenging like wasn't maybe this the fact that it was secret could be the cool part and maybe just make it overall less challenging that could be a really great way to do it but i i agree secret raid bosses are cool um i think when i say that people are going to immediately think of something like wonderlands where the secret raid bosses were inside of chaos chambers where i like that they're secret and I like that they're inside Chaos Chambers, but I think we, we all would have liked some raid bosses outside of the Chaos Chambers, so there's that. Joey NXD says, How about adding explosive as an actual element and incorporate it like a part of a gun, which makes every bullet let out a small explosion? And then torque weapons and grenades can be bigger booms and more explosive damage. That's a, that's a pretty cool point, because... Explosive used to be considered an element and I think if you had something that just said plus 20% elemental damage that it would boost explosive damage I don't remember the reason for changing it I think so that they could do a lot more with elements that didn't involve explosives like having them t All be tied to the same system might have caused problems um, I'm not too sure but I think what you're explaining is a little bit like the Borderlands 2 system except without your added component where Torg weapons and grenades do bigger booms which a lot of times they did do bigger booms so i think your system is very very similar to the borderlands 2 system and from how i understand it which is it's a cool system i like having it in that game it is an actual element so again i'm not too sure the the whole reason for separating it from the other elements i just know that they did it and when they did it i wasn't like against it when it happened if you know what i'm saying then Joey says, my first BL2 Legendary was a corrosive fastball. Oh, that's super sick. That What an amazing first Legendary to get. One of the best Legendaries in the game. And thank you for your comments, Joey. If everyone's ever thinking like, oh, I shouldn't post two comments. No, post two comments. Post three comments. If, you got, if you're watching the video and you think of something and you want to comment about it then, post it. And then you, you think of something later on, you want to comment about it then, post it. I, that is the whole point of the comment section. Don't be... Don't be afraid to, to post multiples, multiples. And I can, and if I'm gonna be going back and editing and putting your comments in the videos, then I am also a human being. I can, I can figure it out, you know? I can put your comments in an order that makes sense to me. Cause I'm not just, I'm not, I, although I'm not, you know, super cutting the video, I am, you know, trying to order things in a chronological way. And I've set up my, my, my content in that, in that way. By the way, the one-shots are getting insane. I'm not sure if there is a build question from the comment section, but if we do get one, I'll do a, a brief overview of how we're one-shotting this boss so easily. At this point, I think everyone here knows, but maybe not. 
LCD says, started farming on Borderlands 3 because of this series. You know, that's a great thing. Farming in Borderlands 3 is a, is a lot of fun. Especially, you get your you get your piece of gear, and you're like, wow, that was a chase. That was, like, I don't agree with the sentiment that Borderlands 3 doesn't have um, fun or meaningful chases. I think that they're fun, and they are meaningful. So, I'm super glad that you're on, on Borderlands 3. You know, it, it, it might just be a, a case where some people think that Borderlands 2 or other Borderlands games have more, like, better things to go do with it. You know, they think, like, the game overall is more enjoyable, so each Legendary enhances their experience more by proxy. But I enjoy the Borderlands 3 experience. Um, it, I agree that when you do get something new, it is like, okay, where do I go with it? But in Borderlands 2, it's kind of the same thing. Even though Borderlands 2 feels a little bit more RPG. Oh, no one-shot! It's okay. I'm a professional. Watch this. Perfectly timed racks. Oh, not timed. A little bit early on those racks. Dang. Okay. So we just gonna toss nades here, I think. One for each laddie. Maybe an action skill. Racks can miss, though, which is a big problem. Especially in this arena. I feel like this arena makes weird things happen. We should be fine to get the kill there. There we go. But I'm happy that you started to farm on, on BO3 LCD. I think that's really cool. Dan Morgan says, look for a triple sticky longbow grenade. Just devastating. You'd have to explain to me, Dan, or anyone that knows, how does it actually work? You know, how does it... Because the peregrine puts a sticky on them, right? I don't think... It's hard for me to tell because what's actually happening with this peregrine when I toss it. Like, I try to, I try to watch. I don't see the grenade anywhere. It's, it just blows up. So I'm not too sure exactly what's happening but triple sticky longbow does that mean that when the first sticky hits it sends out three other sticky longbows or does, do all those sticky longbows go on the same target that'd be it, that'd be pretty cool to to know and understand would it do even more than the fish slap i really i don't know but thank you dan morgan for your comment and i, I have been looking at grenades more on the ground thinking like that would be pretty cool with a peregrine which is a reason why I I enjoy the Peregrine. It's like it's a delivery system. It kind of makes you like a like a spellcaster, like a mage. So I will be on the lookout. Triple sticky longbow. You got my word. JV Wonder Kid says I'd like a complete rehaul re of the firing range. One, need a bank and respect station in the room. Good idea. Two, slider adjustments on target. Slash targets. Example of this is choosing the target defenses, manually applying tar targets, health bar, or shield, or armor, or apply all of the above. Good idea. Target scales with you, or maybe even manually input health, shield, armor value to stim to simulate raid bosses. That's number two makes a ton of sense to me. Uh, maybe a scoreboard display, personal best of damage number for a gun, grenade, action skill, melee, etc. Have Marcus comment something if you hit a PB. I understand the lab caters to the 1% of the game and game players, but I'd like a space to fully dive in and crunch some numbers, have going back to the lab be an inviting place. P.S. I wrote this in ten, at the 10 minute mark when you were talking about this later in the vid. Oh, very cool. Okay, so yeah, let's let's di let's dive into it then. Uh, let's talk about these 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 changes that JV Wonder that would implement into the game because I think that there's some really good ideas here. I, I mean, I, I mentioned it briefly, some of the stuff, but you go way, way more in depth. Um, ooh, that's a 12, 2, 6, 6 times 4. It's not max damage. We, we move on, unfortunately. I think there's a there's a lot to be said for your points here, JV Wonder. So a, first, a bank and a respec station in the room. I think that makes so much sense. You can swap weapons in and out. You don't have to run to and fro. It becomes your spot to just do like do damage. Like that's a great, great idea. It's a simple idea. It's an idea that can be easily implemented, and it's a solution to to you know the the need that's running around in sanctuary. Right, great idea. Number two, slider adjustments on the target and slash target. So you want to have. You want to have a lot more control over what type of enemy you're shooting at. You want them, and you, you definitely, I'm assuming you want them to have them scaled properly, right? Because right now in Sanctuary 3, if you try to fa use that as a, as a place to try stuff out, anything that gets mayhem scaling is not calculated. 
because there's no mayhem on sanctuary and the reason that's the case is because they want you to be able to slide your mayhem up and down while you're on sanctuary it's not a good monarch by the way they want you to be able to slide your mon uh, your mayhem up and down while in sanctuary and have it be like a safe space where there's no mayhem happening but that ends up ruining the target dummy practice so that you have to actually go out and find enemies to shoot while they're trying to hit you it can get pretty annoying so you want you want properly scaled enemies you want to have the ability to just have a a sandbox target practice where you choose your enemy you choose their hp bar or you know whether it be armor shield h uh, red health or even uh, bones if you're playing wonderlands right so white um have an enemy type that you can that you can put in and maybe like you gain access to inputting that type of enemy uh by defeating a certain amount of those enemies that could be a decent way to it's kind of like a again i call it a border decks when i talk about different ideas a border decks is something that you you know you download data and you put it in the border decks something maybe you can unlock target practice a certain type of enemies i understand not wanting to just have like live skags held up for like animal cruelty reasons 100 percent get that so you don't have to have it be alive it doesn't have to be alive it can be a, a dummy it can be a target dummy as long as it behaves the same oh fish left as long as it behaves the same as the actual thing like it doesn't have to move or be real but as long as we know that the damage values are the same and as long as it's shaped the same, right? That's fine. I completely agree with your number two, JV Wonder, about having way more control over how and when and why you shoot at enemies. And number three is you want a scoreboard. You want data tracking. Like, how did I hit my PB? Like, what was my, my biggest damage shot ever recorded in the lab? Maybe Marcus was like, wow, what a shot great idea i think i don't think we there's a chance that it ever makes it into the very end of the game because of how much i think extra coding and work it's going to be for them to do when they have so many other things to get done and then there it's a business for for gearbox they aren't going to implement a lot of these you know passion project changes because they just don't have the time and the resources so they just move on so Unfortunately, I don't think that has a slim chance of making it, but it'd be really cool if it did. Like, maybe your best your best overall shot, maybe your highest DPS ever recorded, you know, something like that could be really, really cool. Um, having more stats in the training area, I think, is a great, great idea. Another critical knob gave me a pretty long post, but he was nice enough to add a TLDR and his comment is about Lorelei and I had someone in a previous video say, I don't like Lorelei, get rid of Lorelei. And I was like, I don't understand why you're saying that. I know that she, that she's a controversial character, but I have to just assume that because you didn't tell me why you didn't like her, you just, you don't like her because of the controversy. So someone was breaking down the controversy and they said, Lorelei felt like America's idea of a British person. Lorelei's character now feels or Lorelai felt like an American's idea of a British person. Okay. Lorelai's character now feels like a diverse mission marker rather than Lorelai. And if you're going to play BL3 as much as, you do, as much as you do, prepare to catch culture war strays. You know that? It, it does make sense to me, like everything you're saying. And I'm, Borderlands does have a, a, a subsect of political and social disagreement and, you know, what you like you say, culture war going on within it. I just choose to not partake in it i just don't think it's 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 a healthy thing for my own mental space and if i and if i like or dislike something because of the way it's politically tuned or, or charged especially at this time like the with the united states presidential election coming up i i just in general like to not talk about it especially on a on my youtube channel but thank you for breaking this down, and if you do want a, a deeper breakdown, go check out another Critical Knobs comment. It's it's a, it breaks down a lot of what people think about Lorelai, what he thinks about Lorelai. And honestly, it's pretty insightful, so go ahead and, and give that a check out. Brandon Villanueva asks, can you show us where to get this fish eye grenade? So I'm assuming you mean the fish slap. And Casillas, our boy, says the fish slap grenade drops in the cartels event from fish slap. Tyrone Smallums and Joey Ultraviolet. That is exactly right, Casillas. Thank you for coming in clutch there. Yeah. In order to get the fish slap, you need to activate the cartel event from the main menu. And you need to, there's a couple, you can either do the quest for Marcus, go to Villa Ultraviolet and farm for it and do it that way. Or you can get it this kind of overtime playing Borderlands with the event active. Eventually you will get um, 
cartel enemies spawning and they have a chance to drop the fish slap so you can do it that way you don't actually have to ever go to villa ultraviolet but that going there doing the marcus quest for the event is the fastest way to get the fish slap Nicholas Steven says, I decided to look at what the black market has this week, and I saw the light show was in there. So far, I've got a God Roll Corrosive in the first 30-ish, plus a God Roll Recursion. Now I just need to, now I just need RNG to be nice to me and give me the rest of the elements. Oh, very cool. And there's two replies here. One of them is me, so we won't really read that one. LCD says, dude, I got a God Roll Radiation version, vendor being nice this week. It's interesting that you guys talk about the vendor, because from my experience, the vendor resets every 30 minutes right so you can only check it one time then it goes away i don't think i necessarily like i whenever i farm it i, I farm it once in a while but then it slows down whatever else i'm doing right so i don't typically farm the vendor i know there's ways around it but i'm more of like a I'm more of like a play by the rules kind of guy not much for glitches but the vendor the vendor can be very very good so i'm, I'm happy for you guys that you're that you're doing this Getting yourself some nice light shows. The light show as a vendor weapon isn't the most uh, important because it does drop so easily in the Obsidian Forest of DLC 3. That being said, if you're someone who doesn't have the DLC, I think this, I, by the time this video posts, it probably will still be active for one more day. And then yeah, if you're someone who doesn't have the DLC, it's a perfect time to go get yourself one of the best weapons in the game. Nicholas Stevens says, also, yes, dedicated drops work with the Game of Year version and even alternately acquired copies. He's talking about the G Game of the Year Borderlands 1 dedicated drops mod that I was thinking about running. And he's letting me know that it works. I'm very happy. And he's, uh, I don't want to say he's bragging, but it looks like he's bragging about having an alternately acquired copy or knowing someone who has gotten one and told him that it works. So, but I, I thank you for the information and I appreciate it. I know, Monarch Unfortunato. Bailey Lovich says, done probably 150 runs, got a god roll times four and a times eight non-elemental Monarch. Hey, that's great, though. That's great. Congratulations. That's really good luck. I'm proud of you and all of your accomplishments. I really, really love you guys. And those are all the comments for this week. So thank you guys all so much for the comments that you guys have, that you've given me. It's been you know, great to catch up with all the people, all the fans. It is, it is more work to put them on screen and read them aloud. So I don't know how much I'm going to be doing that. It makes, it takes a lot longer to do that. Hopefully I did this in the right amount of time. Oh, a little bit late. I don't know how much I'll be doing that. If I just chill back here, I think I'll be fine. I don't think they have enough damage to kill me, hopefully. Hey, give me that booster. You can't damage me. I got radiation boost. Later, kiddo. Very sick. Yeah, so we are we are continuing our own farm. I've done way more than 150, but again, the odds now are much worse than we thought previously. So honestly, I don't feel like I've been gypped. I feel like I've I'm still you know doing my time. I'm still if I get it. If I were to get it now, I would feel like I got I was lucky. Oh, not getting the one shot is tough, but I can work on my my one shot here though. On the strut back. And throw a second one just in case. The second one will be late though, if it if it does hit. Yep. Ah oh, man, I'm just a bad player, I guess, huh? Eat this fish slap from downtown. Oh, that was Mr. President. Let's go, baby. Alright, predicted. Good night, kill level. Boom. Catch you <laughs> right in the face with that one. Is that a monarch? It is. I already have a god roll cryo times four, so I don't think this one is god roll, so even if it was, wouldn't need it. And still one week uh, later since the last time I recorded a comment section video, it's been pretty quiet on the, the Borderlands story front. There hasn't been a whole lot. I have watched some Borderlands stuff of people giving, you know, their ideas for Borderlands 4 and things like that. So there's still people interested in the entry, but it's been, Gearbox has been relatively quiet. No new developments for the time being. As for myself, the wedding is less than two weeks away. I'll be a married lad. 
preparations are going well. People's people are starting to get their you know their jobs in the wedding, and people are getting ready to all meet up where we're at and here in Central New York and get ready to party. It's gonna be a great time. As far as the channel after the wedding is what's going to change don't expect very many changes um posting as much as we can now the content schedule is, is varying depending on how much work and other things i've got going on and you have the amount of siblings cousins and people in your life as i do there's always something going on so like yesterday my brother he acquired, and they're not bad things. My brother acquired NASCAR tickets to go watch the NASCAR playoffs at Watkins Glen, and it was incredible. The weather held up beautifully. There was a 0% chance of rain, and guess what? The meteorologist didn't lie. There was no rain. It was incredible. Watkins Glen is a, it's a road course for the NASCAR pl uh, playoffs, so it's not just left turns, like Jeff Dunham would say, right? Is it? I, someone's got to tell me who that ventriloquist is. I think it's Jeff Dunham. Like Jeff Dunham would say, it's just a left turn, another left turn. Watson's Glen is actually almost all right turns. And then there's a few left turns, but the track, you go around it in a clockwise formation rather than a counterclockwise formation. And it's not an oval. It is dives and dips and straightaways and sharp turns. Like the very first turn of the track at the, on turn one is a long straightaway with a hard right turn where people crash a lot, especially late in the race when they're pushing for more they're pushing more aggressive moves to get by people, right? And a lot of times, if you know racing games, if you're behind someone, you're driving behind someone and you have a very sharp turn after a long straightaway, you can do a strategy called bombing the corner, which is you just drive way faster than the person in front of you. And when they slow down to take the turn, you ram them from behind. You put them out of control. They slow you down instead of, so instead of your brakes doing the job, their car does the job and you get to keep going. And in NASCAR, they call it dumping, guys, right? If, if they're turning and you got speed behind them and you don't, you don't slow down, you just ram them from behind and, and put them in a wall or spin them out or crash them or flip them, it's called dumping, guys. And dumping, guys, is frowned upon. Now, there's always a certain level that's allowed because this is a, it's a very physical sport. And there's cars going very, very quickly. And you can't just not have guys touching each other with these vehicles. That's why they are all safety strapped in and everything like that. But there's always a flux. There's always a, 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 a spectrum of what's too much, what's too little. Are you, are you letting yourself get bullied out there? Um, Carson Hosevar from Spire Racing, he's a rookie this season. And he mentioned after the race that he... Oh, it wasn't Carson Hosvar, it was Zane Smith. Zane Smith was saying he's had a rough a rough rookie year, and he this race, he plays well. He said that a part of that was that he pushed back. He was he was being rough back. And so he had to learn that maybe, you know, he, he wasn't aggressive enough. My favorite driver, Ross Chastain, this season has changed his strategy, I think, a little bit because he was very aggressive his first few years in this in the NASCAR Sprint Cup series. Or just the NASCAR Cup Series, I think. No longer Sprint. And, and that made him a lot of enemies on that track, including the Hendrix Motorsports team, which is supposed to be, you know, his ally out there on the track. Yeah, 12879 12, times 4. Okay, it's going to be really close to God Roll. Let's go ahead and take it and see if this is going to be absolute best in slot for a times 4. Let's see. Three bodies, three barrels. Grip is damage. Four grip is fire rate. Rails accuracy. Get this out of my face. Get this out of my face. No, no, no. You don't get to just chill in the inventory, bro. You're gone forever. Bye. You go again. So Rosh Hastain has had to pull back. And he actually didn't even make the playoffs. But yesterday, during the playoffs, all the drivers race, regardless if you're in the playoffs or not. It's just that you're you you're not in contention to win the championship if you're not a playoff driver. So Rosh Chastain's not in the playoffs, but at Watkins Glen, he qualified the best and he got to start from first, which was awesome. He led most of the race. It was an incredible experience to watch my favorite driver come around the track. And I'm just screaming, oh, nice hell walker. And I'm just screaming and things are going crazy and it's just an awesome, awesome time. 
it's just really really exciting to have to you know to watch that unfortunately my brother's favorite driver the, the guy who paid for the tickets he his driver was out of the race basically in the first lap because Corey lajoy one of the drivers apparently caused the big wreck yeah it is what it is sometimes sometimes you get unlucky and a driver named ryan blaney who's the, who's the defending champion who's in the playoffs and needs to race in these races otherwise he could be in trouble a times four not high damage okay the defending champion he's in the playoffs and he wrecked on the first lap or he wrecked very not I don't, maybe it was the very first lap of the race i think it was and he wanted the time with his team to go in the pit stop pit stall and see if they could get it working again and head out there but nascar said no you were done and so ryan blaney when the media went to go talk to him he goes nascar doesn't know like they don't know what they're like they have to they didn't even give us a chance and he basically said that they don't he doesn't think they would have been able to fix it but he was very disappointed in nascar for not allowing him they basically said nope put it in the garage you're done get off and that's what nascar says goes there's always pushback it's always a given it's always give and take with nascar but so ryan blaney got screwed at the end of the day ross chastain my driver did not win the race Neither did Chain Van Gisberg and the driver that was battling for first the whole race. It was Chris Busher, a veteran driver who's not in the playoffs either, but still has a lot on the line in these races. And Chris Busher did a fantastic job. Ooh, Impaler. Oh, Volcar leveled up. Let's go. What do we Oh, I've actually I was I've been running an Amara on the side, leveling her up through, and boom, which look at that. So now I have I can get a Blade Fury for her. Which is awesome. I still don't have an anointed blade fury for myself. Hmm. I've been meaning to get a blade fury for my for my Amara. So I think I will do that. And then I'm gonna go back to the to the Fallen Heroes Vault card. So that way I can start I keep farming more Guardian Angels, which is a great great thing. I want a bladed Guardian Angel for this build to even go even harder. So yeah, went to the, the track yesterday. We had pre-race passes to go on to the racetrack and be right up next to where the drivers were all congregating next to their cars. A really, really cool experience. My brother's fiance, her favorite driver is Bubba Wallace, and Bubba Wallace was just chilling on this, at the racetrack and got to go talk to him. And my dad ha had him record a video saying, Christina, I wish you were here. It's like super cool. Okay, a little bit late on this one, I think. A little bit early, actually. Yeah, a little bit early. Dang it. It was really cool to, to be there on the racetrack. And I've been to Watkins Glen a couple times um, as a kid. And once within the last couple years for a 5K. It's a really cool racetrack. But it's, going there as a spectator, as an adult, was really, really cool. I, I mean, I got sunburned. But the food was great. The people were great. Everything was just amazing, amazing. And Kyle Larson caused another wreck. I'm telling you, this guy, he causes every single wreck and no one ever, ever calls him out. But I was there and there was Kyle Larson fans there next to me. And I was like, he caused an, another wreck. It's his fault. It's always his fault. And they, I think they were laughing a little bit, hopefully. And today, I don't want them to hate me. Go get him. We get that one shot we do very very clean all right just to take stock of where we are at we are 377 runs in the closest thing we've gotten is this maximum damage monarch that is missing two pieces one is the accuracy bloom on the body and the second is the fire rate on the barrel everything else is just perfect i would like an element maybe but that's about where we're at peregrine's been the number one farming method by far all right, Peregrine me. How about, how about a bit of a one-shot for your lad, huh? Boom, there we go. That was sick. You're gonna give me a perfect times eight Monarch. It's a times four, not max damage. We're just gonna let, the, let it chill there. So we have ourselves a really, really good times eight Monarch. Some might even, I mean, you could make an argument, I should say, that it's the best because it lacks that fire rate. But... I kind of want one that has the fire rate. I want to shred things as fast as possible. Let's go. 
and, and I'm honestly, I'm here to collect all different variants of monarchs. I have a times four cryo god roll now, which is awesome. And that fire one I just picked up is a times four fire god roll minus the accuracy, which if I'm here only farming one god roll for times eight, and I'm collecting all these other smaller, like, you know, smaller ones, I'm 100% down for that. 100% down. All right, let's go. Oh, a little bit early on that. Maybe not, though. Boom, let's go. I'm dropping Monarch. And also, I'm always running over these piles. I don't think it always spawns Iridium, though, is my thing. So if it doesn't spawn Iridium, maybe I should just save quit right away. And this definitely, save quitting definitely feels faster than throwing a grenade at my feet and sitting through the respawn animation. Plus, it cleans up the loot. And it also refreshes the vendor. So I gotta figure, someone said right in the comments, a triple sticky longbow. So I gotta figure, I'm just gonna look at some parts. So longbow and sticky are two different. I wonder what the actual like the verbiage is of the grenade that I'm looking for. Is it just triple sticky longbow? Later kid. One shot steel feel good, still feel great. All that iridium, gimme, give gimme. Give okay, Tom's Farm Monarch without max deeps. Sorry. Might even have a higher magazine. No, it doesn't. Okay. 381. Should we have a party at 544? How many 544s are we gonna have to do until we get the god roll we want? Who knows? But I'm having a great time farming it. I, and I still don't know what the farm after this is going to be you know after i get my monarch what am i going to do like where am i going to go i think what i might do is use that times eight monarch to to try to like kill scourge really fast and farm a stinger for this for for my peregrine class okay a nine volt and a crossroad okay give me that iridium the cash kk Because once I get the times eight, I'm gonna want to have my next farm be able to use it. So if you have ideas of what I should farm using it, then drop them in the comment section. Tell me what I should farm next. I was thinking like the seer for something. Uh, this the seer drop. I know the seer drops a class mod for most. I wonder if it drops a class mod for every class. I doubt it. Wait, okay. Oh, a monarch popped out the last second. 11,000 times four, so it's not going to be that great. It's it's a it's a bigger magazine one, though. It's definitely a bigger magazine one. I would not be against getting a larger magazine size, but I think it takes the same... I don't think it's the magazine that rolls it. I, th I think it's the grip or something that rolls it. If I had one, I could probably show you, but I don't think I do. Not on me, because I went back to the bank. And dropped off a ton of stuff back to the bank. So right now, all I have on me is the stuff necessary for the farm. The, the, the toboggan to get here, the two assault rifles that I've gotten so far, and the times eight reference. Which is crazy to think about. I slapped this dude. Boom. That, 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 what's the coolest part about it to me is that it looks like the second peregrine is the one that does the damage, right? It looks like it's... The first peregrine hits, and then by the time the, the fish slap goes off, it, may, it to me it looks like it's the second peregrine that does it. But jump down. That's that that looks sick to me. Regarding angel me, cloning big brother tracker, homing divider divider. I wonder if I did a cloning maddening tracker. But I've heard the recurring tracker probably is pretty good. I've heard that the gas call is good on flak. That'd be kind of cool to get like a vindicator gas call. <laughs> One of the hardest farms in the entire game. Do it legit too, like no shenanigans. Oh my, all it takes is one, all it takes is one rack to get there and things happen. Beautiful. Three hundred eighty-five runs in. The, men the, the mental, how's it going? A um, quick mental check-in? It's going strong for me. I think because I kind of dabble 
in Roguelands content, it makes it so that every time I come back here, add the loop tracker. Every time I come back here, I'm thinking to myself like, like this is, you're not really grinding anything in those games besides like the competitive edge of, or like the this feeling of winning a run, right? And I'm trying to complete the Roguelands gauntlet and honestly, just beating Roguelands with randomized weapons is tough. Because those enemies get those randomized weapons too. And sometimes they're terrible and sometimes they won't shot you. So it's never easy. All right, drop down. I wonder what makes it not one shot because the one shot's so consistent. Then there's that random time where it just isn't, you know? Did anybody watch NFL football this past weekend? My, I didn't watch that much football, but my fantasy team popped off. I had the Buffalo Bills defense. As a Central New Yorker, I felt like it was my job to take the Buffalo Bills defense, and they scored, they got three interceptions. They scored a touchdown. It's ridiculous. Okay, let's see. 11,000 times four, non-elemental. Okay. Unfortunately, that's not going to be the one. That's not going to be the one. But I had a couple guys, Malik Neighbors from the Giants. He did a great job. Uh, uh, Alvin Kamara also did amazing. He wasn't on my team, but uh, fans football this time of the season is pretty sick when no one really knows who the who the studs are and you leave it up to your draft to do the work for you. I mean, I'm not much for knowing who... I know some of the players. I don't know all of them. Like, I, I took some players I know, like Derrick Henry and Stefan Diggs, uh, Dak Prescott at quarterback. I had the fourth pick overall. I had, took B. John Robinson. He fell to me. So I took him, and my wide receivers are, my wide receiver one, I think, is Stefan Diggs, which isn't the best, because this past weekend, he only scored seven points, but week one, he scored two touchdowns. So, Dak's the one who's been underperforming the most. But I was the first person in my league to take a kicker, and I got memed on hard for taking a kicker early, but I looked at the projected point differential. So I looked at the, like... For the next few position players, the projected point differential was like two to three points for positions. Some positions were higher, some positions were lower, but the biggest one was kicker. And Harrison Bucker was projected way, way higher. I think it was something like eight points. It was by far the biggest jump of any of the any of the players. I guess I could have gotten value by taking him later and letting that and letting that gap keep keep getting bigger and bigger. But sometimes the gap wouldn't get bigger. And I thought, I, I could be making up a lot of points here. And Bucker has been doing amazing to start the season for kicker. I've gotten a lot of value from that. Oh, no one shot. Okay. Okay. Fish slap's going to hit at the right time. Fish slap me. Fish slap me. No way. Dang, that's disappointing. We almost had to go back to the old tactics. Or we did go back to the old tactics. It just didn't work. I should hit him. There we go. Let's get out of here. You're spoiling the party. Get him, Rex. I said you're spoiling the party. Grenade! That's crazy how my rack doesn't kill him there. You know what I'm saying? Oh, you don't want to, you don't want a piece of that work. Another oh, it fires like the Sandhawk. That's so sick, but it's the angel. It's a really it's a really sick gun. Look at that. Okay. We count the ticker once again. So fantasy football is going pretty well for me. I'm, looks like I'm going to be 2-0. and oh, so I think it happens tonight. Monday Night Football. Don't date the video, but there it is. It looks like I'm locked in. My points forward, probably not the highest. Actually, I had a pretty bad week one. 108 points. Not so great. But this one, I was projected to get like 130, 140-something. It's respectable. All right. We get the one shot because we create a hypotenuse. Trust in the hypotenuse. By, by walking to the corner, right, don't we create a longer distance? I know I might already be at max distance. I'm not sure what the max distance is or how it's calced, but if I create an hypotenuse, well, isn't that a longer distance? Because A squared plus B squared equals C squared. That's all I'm saying. It's 
So if we take the distance from where I'm stand or from where I'm aiming right there to right there and we multiply it by itself, right? And add it to the distance from here to there, multiply that by itself, add those two together. That equals the square root of this distance. So this distance is by default further away than the center because it's you're adding a value even if it's not the highest value a blast master that's crazy i haven't seen one of those in forever wow it's just like unfortunately when it comes to allegiance roles they kind of get outclassed by allegiance company man relics like the whole allure of the companies rolling on your relic is kind of gone away a little bit i think with the company man just being the de facto if you want to use tdors well you can get a double magazine size roll on your company man you know what i'm saying trust in the hypotenuse it's yet to, it's yet to do us wrong i run over almost at seven thousand iridium that's a big get and what i'm thinking about doing is i might put out a poll when I get the times eight god roll of what my anointment should be, and I'll put like, um, I'll put some some stuff out there. I'll do a fadeaway active 150. I could do on web on action skill and get increased weapon damage by 100% for 10 seconds or something like that. Even though I don't think that one will get no hypotenuse. Go back and wait a second and then toss. That's that's perfect toss, perfect toss, perfect toss. Oh yes. Reward me. Reward me, game. Okay, 9 volt. So I'm thinking it's going to be either a fadeaway active, weapon damage, or consecutive hits, or U-Rad. Those are my three biggies. I might put out a poll and see if you guys want U-Rad consecutive hits or fadeaway active. But I don't really see another... Another anointment of really beating those. I trust in the hypotenuse. You guys don't look at explosions. There, the monarch. That's what I'm looking for. <laughs> Drop it for me. It's making me. The more I do runs like these, the more I'm thinking. Should I just go to the the true trial and farm my monarch there? No. Kill will drop me this weapon. Okay. When this game released, this is where you got the monarch. I think. I'm not sure if the monarch did it come. One thing the, was the monarch available on release because I know it's a mayhem six and above exclusive. So how did it work? How did it work? Brainstormer. But as far as I know, this is the OG way to get the monarch, and this is the way I'm gonna do it. Before the trials were ever able, before you were, before, while wow, you were still playing with whatever it is dolls in your mama's kitchen people were here farming kilovolt now of course they didn't have the peregrine that's just something that i get to have fun with that they didn't and the trials are fun but i want to at least pay homage pay homage to the greats that came before us <laughs> Oh man, it's crazy how often I see on Reddit people looking for gear that say, hey, I'm looking for this specific piece of gear. What in the world has happened? Pop goes the weasel. That's okay, the setup doesn't, there's honestly no setup. Like, we always do max damage for fun. 399, come on, on run 400 piece, please. Run 400 piece, and people on Reddit. They're like looking for this piece of gear. Who's got it? And I'm just thinking to myself, you don't play Borderlands like this. You gotta get the gear. Like, that's part of the, that's a big part of it. Oh, high pot news me right at the last second. It, it made the difference. Trust me. Okay, no. Hang on. I'm wondering if oh run 400. That that four zero zero feels good. Hopefully, we don't have to go up to a thousand. By the way, we're about to hit 4k subs. That's crazy. You know, it's pretty crazy. Our, our content's been pretty consistent, which has helped us a lot, but still. Cloning, maddening, frag grenade. 
So I want like a cloning maddening longbow. Is that a thing? I think so. A cloning maddening longbow, or isn't it stickies that you want? You want stickies? But do you need stickies? Because my fish slap isn't sticky. I don't think. Trust, trust in the hypotenuse. Well, what are some grenades? Do, am I going to be the guy that tests out all the grenades and tells everyone what they are? Maybe I will be that dude. Testing every grenade on flag. People like that kind of stuff. Like the, the fully randomized roguelands videos where I just try out every weapon. People like to watch that, I guess. The numbers support that theory. At least for my channel. So I wouldn't mind trying every single grenade out on flak and just break it down bare bones. Hi, pot news me. Oh, thank you. Barely got it the last second. Let's see, a firestorm and a monarch. Okay, it's a times eight rad radiation. Oh, okay. This damage looks low, but it's that's because it's a times eight radiation. Okay. Show me the money, baby. Okay. Two bodies. We're missing something already. And we have the accuracy bloom. Fire rate. Damage. Let's take a look at this other one to see what we're missing. This one has fire rate and damage. We're missing fire rate from the body. And we're missing just straight up 10% damage from the... 10% damage from the barrel. That's tough. Let's check out this grip. It is the times 8 grip. The foregrip is good. The rail is not. Okay, so it's a times 8 radiation monarch. This times 4 is probably going to be a lot better than it's... Maybe. It's missing fire rate. It has the damage on the barrel right there. It's grip is minus damage for the magazine size. Which is tough. Four grip is not damaged. Wow, this, this one is even worse. Holy cow, that's a really bad one. Okay, so. My radiation monarchs have not been good to me. And Killavolt is seizing me then because that's the best monarch to kill him with. That's such a troll. He hates me. We're getting to 402. We might go to, f let's say, 420. Let's call it 420 push these a little bit i want to try out you know other farming styles but i'd want to be able to one shot them you know and this strategy you can get you can one shot them you know no hypotenuse we're just cool like that run through send it again max efficiency let's always trust hypotenuse here oh times eight radiation monarch got my blood pumping a little radiation is one of those ones that I would definitely take Hop down. I pot noose me. Look, they got on target. There we go. That's max speed right there. Okay, we just got a storm front and a nine volt. All right, let's go. Next, storm front could be kind of interesting from a peregrine. For mobbing, you just swap out your grenades. That's the idea of just swapping out your grenades for for mobbing is such a cool idea. Love that. I very much like the. The spell shot from Wonderland. So probably my second favorite class. If not my first favorite. Realistically. The, the hypotenuse never fails us. Go up. 405. Come on, push it. Push it to the limit. Limit. Because we're in it to win it. We lost some time in this video going over the... The math of the odds, so I says it is what it is to be, you know what I'm saying? Okay, no one shot and we trusted hypotenuse. It's actually a really bad run. She's gonna come back. Look at that guy's accuracy over there. Holy cow. Very accurate friend. Really? My rack didn't hit him? 
See that? Even if you do it perfectly. Okay. There we go. Any monarchs? I was going to say, that might kill my... That, that kills my efficiency. Holy moly, it does. Okay. The grind is the grind is the grind. Just check it. <laughs> All right, toss me. I was gonna say he's starting to. Is he he's starting to tank it a little bit better? I wish I could change my my racks to radiation. That'd be kind of cool. Cryo was cool too, though. I think Cryo was pretty cool. If I had to delete either radiation or cryo, I would delete radiation. I think that's something I said in one of my videos. Talking about BL2, BL3, I pretty much suggested just deleting radiation. Cool idea. Explosions, but the explosions kind of lose their luster. If everything explodes, nothing explodes, you know what I'm saying? I thank you for the challenge. Okay. Who was another times eight? Oh, good thing we kept going here. We got fade away active, but it's not weapon damage. It's accuracy and handling. Please. Okay, all three bodies. Okay, all, all three barrels. Grip. Four grip. Oh my gosh, the rail isn't reload speed. It came down to the rail. To the rail. It, it literally came down to the rail. I'm gonna take a look at it. Oh man. Because of how much we need to be reloading, that 10% reload speed matters. It matters. Not a god roll. Not a god roll. It's a tick. It's a tick in the right direction. But it's not a god roll. You need the right rail. That's tough. Gosh. That hurts my soul. It really does. We might have to stop at 4... To give you the 4 on 1. Give the information. Give you the scoop. Even though I said I pushed the 420. I think I might do it for the lads. Maybe I'll get it on that round. Oh my gosh, I didn't even use my Garden Angel. No! That's still pretty good damage without Garden Angel, to be honest. Boom, ba -dum, boom, ba -dum, ba -dum, boom, boom, ba -dum, boom, 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 Spawn. Right into my Rex. Dang. You juked him. Doom, doom, doom. This, this immunity phase isn't that long. Whoa, brother. Did you get away from me? Thanks. No way he goes invisible again. Later, kid. Get to Monarch. Times four. It's not max deep. It's not over 10k. Okay, we we uh, move on. We don't need that one. Just that's just crazy to me that I'm missing just the reload speed. You know, just the reload speed. I don't care about the accuracy because the bipod. You know, you, you end up having really good accuracy anyway. So. Very close. Oh, really? Okay, well, check out this. Check out this though. Strut, strut back. Wait a second. Toss me. Yes. Reward me with a times eight. Okay, now this game is starting to it's starting to pick up a little bit with these with these monarchs. Let's see here. Times four, eight thousand. It's missing damage. It's what else? Grip is good. Four grip is missing damage. Rail, wrong rail. Okay, nice try, guy, but not perfect. Wow. Two times eight. Man, it's tough. I want. If I were to choose an element, that would be like my number one must have I think fire is kind of the coolest but 
Okay, I would take a corrosive one. Because if you think about who you got to fight, I think corrosive makes the most sense. There are so many other cool weapons that can shred Grave Ward. Like, yeah, being able to shred Grave Ward's cool. But now, now that I have this, this fish slap and at least the dragon combo, fire is actually an element that I have covered. As long as I had the Peregrine class mod on me and a point into a rack, I get access to this combo. Now, it might not be as min-max as I have it right now. Send death, my regards. But I always have access to it now. What I would like is something that can maybe, you know, take, take Wotan down. Or Scourge, or something like that. The Seer is a big one that I would love to be able to shred down with the times 8 and a stack bot come on there's no way it doesn't go crazy hard if i can get a double magazine size maybe even a reload speed you know because if i can get off if i can get off two mags you know two to three mags okay wait strut wait for it strut strut back wait a second toss me no way it was close it was close you're gonna jump down there you're gonna jump down there my grenades will land that that's what the prophecy said they were gonna do you're gonna mess up my racks this person is immune okay <laughs> apparently apparently kilovolt wasn't times 25 stage coach <laughs> where are we at 412 we move we keep pushing we keep pushing This is where you get rewarded the most. And if we if we find it this episode, we would definitely wait for the next episode. The hour mark is kind of like that, that moment. If you find it before the hour mark, you get to go use it on stuff. But that would just kind of build the anticipation of, of, you know, running the, killing it, like destroying the world with my new monarch, you know. And we just come up with a really cool route where our monarch gets to be showcased and i could do that on my own like i can go like test out areas where the monarch just will just be insanely strong if i get a, a corrosive one i think some like a hemovorous fight would be insanely cool to do because my hemovorous kills are slow i'm looking for stuff to speed it up and this times eight monarch is supposed to help me So I would love a corrosive one. But I guess non-elemental will be fine. Cryo is good. So I'm happy about that times four cryo, but cryo doesn't have the highest multiplier and it's times four. And it's not times eight, which I know that in general times four is better, but and I've 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 used times fours. But times eight is just cool. You know what I'm saying? It's very cool. Alright, toss me. No hypotenuse needed. A monarch, I think. Okay, so times four, not max damage, okay. We don't need that. 415, we got this. Let me know in the comments what you guys think I should farm next. I think we're gonna run a gauntlet with our monarch first. We're just gonna find stuff to go to shred Tate and we're gonna shred Tate. And they gotta pick something else. Yeah, pick a new farm, pick a new grind. I, I kind of I always like to have that was something I'm chasing, you know, something. I thought about OPQ, but I've, I'm also kind of interested in a plague bearer farm. Another double back-to-back -back monarchs. It's a times eight. Let's check out the parts, baby. Come on, the damage doesn't look that high. Yeah, because I, th I think it is missing parts. It's all bodies, all barrels. Core grip is its fire rate, which I don't necessarily want. And it's iron sights. Okay. Because our we have a times eight, that's higher damage, right? So it's nine one sixteen. From before still our best, which is missing accuracy and it's missing fire rate. That's all it's missing. It even has the right rail. It's tough. Okay. We go again. But I mean, the monarchs are starting to come in, and maybe it's a, maybe it's like um, 
like farming shinies in Pokemon Let's Go where you, you get catch combos. Imagine. But my catch combo would have gotten ruined though because I did... I was doing some arms race with my, a buddy of mine. So. What if, what if using like a giant money tracker peregrine build was the best way to farm money in Borderlands? You set your controller to spam your action skill whenever. And make sure you have a target and you just like continuously get money and more money and more money. That'd be kind of cool. What's up, Pat? It's flying in. <laughs> I went back and watched some more of the trailers from Borderlands 3, and let me tell you something, that they lied to us about Flack. On a few occasions, they show all three pets out with Flack at the same time, and they never even gave us a class mod for that. You cannot have more than one pet out with Flack at one time. And they showed that happening on a few occasions. If they're talking about promises, promises they make to players, How the mighty have fallen. I think that they should be delivering on that kind of promise, you know what I'm saying? They said you're a beast master, right? I get that in World of Warcraft, you only have one companion. And I get that there's problems with AI, I'm sure there's all kinds of problems. But in the trailers, you're showing Flack in quick succession. You First it was, I think, the Jabber, then the spider ant, then the Skag, or something like that. In quick succession, bang, 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 taking down enemies. That is the gameplay experience that a player that will never get, never see. If you could insert a class mod that you can have all three or all four of pets flax out at the same time. That is something that could be very, very cool to add into the game. Okay, last run. Yeah, I'm just full of great ideas. If you guys let's stick around to the end of the videos, I, when, I, when, the, when the comments are done, and it's just us in the farm, and we're trying to maintain sanity. That's when the real ideas come out, and the, the real viewers know that. All right. Do your little spin. Jump. Hypotenuse it to the right for good luck. I can't get there. Okay, we got the one shot. No good luck. Okay. In honor of my service in the Marine Corps, and in honor of a great general, we're going to do one more for Chesty Puller. That's what people used to say in the Marines whenever you were at the gym and you're doing a set of like, uh, say bench press or something or pull-ups especially or something like that. You do one more for chesty. All right, this is 421. Jump to the right on top of the chest, way smoother, right side of me. Boom, one shot. That was for chesty, bro. How could you do that to me? Okay, that's gonna be for this video. Thank you all very much for watching. If you enjoyed, hit the like button, subscribe to see more videos like this one. I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.